you that are saying, is it, is it Linux, is it Linux? Honestly, uh, you can go either way on that. The gentleman who started Linux, his name was Linus Torvalds, so I call it Linux normally, just out of respect for, for Mr. Torvalds, but either way is perfectly acceptable. The two people that developed Unix were Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie, as you see here. They worked for AT&T, or Southwestern Bell Labs, at the time in the late 60s, and ultimately what they were trying, they, they were working and running some programs, and while they were running programs, they were looking for some way to pass the time. And so they developed this little application, which turned out to be Unix, that would allow them to play games, video games essentially, while they were waiting for their programs to run. Originally, it was a single user program, and so they called it Uni, okay, for one. And just to give it a, a little more official sounding name, put an X on it, Unix. And then very, very quickly, it was turned into a multi-user environment. So they wanted to call it Multix, M-U-L-T-I-X. But there was a similar uh, project, project with a similar sounding name at least, called Multix that was going on just up the road. AT&T is based out of New Jersey, just up the road at MIT in Massachusetts so as not to get lost in the shuffle between the names being so similar they just decided to keep the name of Unix as they move forward. In 1974 it was rewritten in C which made it portable. You could now basically put it on any kind of chipset and again you know in today's world we have a lot of different varieties of Linux that you know are, are running on all different platforms. Uh, Windows even have it, has its own version of Unix, as we'll see here shortly. But then in, the next major thing was in 1978 when BSD Unix came along. And this was a huge development in the fact that AT&T's version, which is commonly referred to as System 5, a lot of times you'll see that referenced as SVR4 for System 5 Release 4 or, or well, whatever release or whatever. But that was a, a long-running release. And that was developed in New Jersey, and it was a good system. And a lot of what DOS is today was developed based upon what the original Unix platform was. If any of you have any DOS background, if you think about making a directory, MDIR, making a directory in Unix is MKDIR. So a lot of parallels between the two. But when BSD was created, this was created by Cal Berkeley out on the West Coast, and so now you had two competing, very quality operating systems that were competing one another for market share of Unix. And the problem with that is, is because they were competing for market share on the operating system level, people didn't really develop applications that would sit up on top of the operating system. Meanwhile, there was a young guy who found some friends in a garage and they decided hey you know what this DOS thing's pretty good let's build some applications on it and we now know the Windows operating system and the Microsoft Office products and everything well by name and what Gates did strategically is he took the uh, existing software that was already quality software and just built applications and worried about selling the applications whereas the Unix environment was more worried about which operating system was going to win and didn't worry about the applications, letting Gates take the lead on that. There have been some very, very quality Office-like products for a number of years, and some of them now are getting some notoriety, like OpenOffice. Some of you all may be aware of that, but this was a major shift in at and strategy because now they had a competitor that had a very quality system as well. In 79, at and announced that they were going to commercialize it, and then they released their first commercial in 82. In between that time, what AT&T did is they went to a lot of universities around the United States and said, hey, if, if you will teach your, we would call them IT or IS or whatever people today, but data processing probably at the time, if you will teach your computer education majors on our operating system, we'll give it to you for free. And AT&T's intent with that was, if we give this to you, then you will teach your people, and when they go out into the marketplace and get jobs and they say, hey, we need a new computer system, they're going to be familiar with Unix as they get buying power within the organization. 
you know, managers, et cetera, they're going to start purchasing Unix as, as their server-based platform, and that's exactly what happened. And then we have 1991 Linus Torvalds. He created Linux. It started out, he's a Scandinavian at a college, and one of his college projects was simply to create a little operating system for use and turned into what is now a world-class operating system and it has a lot of followers worldwide. It's, it's just a, a phenomenal system. 95, you have the internet growth. I haven't seen this stat in a couple of years, but I think it was about three years ago, it was estimated that 80% of all of the internet traffic ran through a Unix-based server and 80% of that, which would be about 65% overall, was Linux-based. So about three years ago, 65% of all Internet traffic was running through Linux. So again, just a brief history, give you a little bit of an idea of where Unix has come from, where it's going to be going in the future. You know, that's, that's a little bit up in the air still. Obviously, virtualization is a huge thing in today's environment. I saw an interview with Linus Torvalds, I think it was right at about a year ago now, and uh, he said, they were asking him about virtualization, they said, what direction is virtualization going to go in Linux? And he said, I don't know. And they're like, wait a minute, this is this product is named after you, you know, what can you tell us? He said, he said virtualization is a huge thing. We're, we're going to have virtualized platforms, you know, we've got great products out there. But he said, that is not my concern. There are people on our team that are great at virtualization. I leave it in their hands. I don't want to know about virtualization. I may use virtualization, but it is not under my development expertise. And honestly, uh, that did a couple of things for me. Uh, but, but one of the main things was is that it told me, I don't have to know everything. I just have to know where to go to get it. And I think sometimes we, we feel like when somebody asks a question, we need to have it right there on the top of our head. But if Linus Torvalds could say he doesn't know everything about his, his own product in a public environment, then I, I can say I'll get the answer for you as soon as I can.